uh, you can't go. And he got thinking about that. He said, I got at him. He said, you get a big long stick. And one of you get on one end, one on the other. And he said, my, my mouth, I'm really strong in the mouth. And I'll grip onto that stick. And you can fly me down. And I can go with you. And they said, we'll try it. Well, they tried it. Uh, and they made a trial run. It worked the best there was. And, uh, they, uh, they left and it's going south. And it's doing the finest there was. As it's going down, as two old farmers out in the field went out and looked up and said, I tell you, I've never seen nothing like that. I mean, and they got to looking and a talking, and no frog could hear them. It's flying pretty low. And that, that's what I'm said. That's the most uh, uh, outstanding thing I ever saw. Said, it's took a genius to think about that. Said, you reckon who thought of it? The old frog said, I did. <laughs> Fit keep his mouth, and, and we're like that. Sometimes we'd keep our mouth shut. We'd be twice as well off, wouldn't we? We need sometimes an anchor to keep us from falling down. Man, I tell you, every one of us, uh, uh, every one of us could. Uh, uh, the Bible said, "He that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall." And when you see somebody, when you see your fellow man. Uh, do something and fall, don't say, I expected it. Did you ever hear that? I expected it. I remember when I got saved, uh, they gave me anywhere from three weeks to three months, and I'd be back in the same old shape. Uh, most of that crowd's done gone, and I'm still here, and uh, still saved, still living for God. Uh, but we're bad to say, well, I expected it. And we could fall. Now you're not above it and I'm not above it. If it wasn't for the grace of God, there wouldn't be one of us sitting here that would be decent. It's by the grace of God. But uh, not long ago, uh, they, I saw there was a, a mountain climber. He'd climbed up and he'd got on this rock and he'd got stranded. He couldn't go up or down neither. You know what they done? They brought a helicopter. And they made it as an anchor. And they let down a rope. And this man come down. And he put a harness on this man. Oh, whether he couldn't fall. And he was anchored off to that helicopter. And uh, you know, uh, that's what we need to do. We need to get anchored off out of Jesus. And to Him and His presence and His power and His glory. Because... Uh, we're like the man on the ledge. We're at a play. You say, preacher, uh, could we fall and become lost? No, I ain't talking about that. Uh, brother, I'm a talking about. I've seen people fall in their testimony. I've seen people fall in their, uh, uh, in, in their testimony, in their influence. Did you realize uh, that you can destroy a lifetime of influence in just one deed? Just one deed. Pitching one little fit. And saying a lot of stuff or doing a lot of stuff uh, that you shouldn't do. And we ought to watch. We ought to watch ourselves. Because the devil, if he can kill your influence, if he can kill your joy, if he can kill your, uh, uh, if he can kill your uh, standing among the world, and I tell you, uh, the world don't put a lot of confidence in you in one week's living. You take James Bowman here. I don't know exactly how old James is, but I heard him testifying. Uh, he's been saved a good while. Uh, I mean, uh, people put as much confidence in him as any person I know around here. And he didn't earn that confidence in a week or a month. But it's over the years. And a lot of the rest of you, he ain't the only one, a lot of the rest of you, the world's looking on you. And they, they see in your life. And they expect you. You know what? They expect you to drive by on Sunday morning. They expect you to drive by on Sunday night. They expect you to drive by on Wednesday night. And they look for you. And over the years, when they see you going and they see you coming, they see you living right. They see you hanging in there when things get dry. And they see you hanging in there oh, when things are, is it a shout. 
And they see when uh, trouble comes and things comes. You know, uh, it's like Frances. I mean, uh, through all she's been through, I, I, I've not heard her complain. She may have, uh, but I ain't heard her complain one time. Uh, and she's still a serving God. You think people don't see that? Yes, sir. People see that. And we need to an anchor uh, to keep us from falling into this world. Uh, because we're living epistles. You remember this. We're the only Bible that a lot of folks read. We are living epistles known and read of men daily. And the only thing they know about Jesus is what uh, they see in our life. And listen. You may be in a storm, you may just come out of a storm, you may be going into a storm. But be prepared. Have that anchor of the soul. And that's in the Lord Jesus. Not in man, not in self, not in what we could do. And you just be uh, where God can use you. Let's pray. Our Father, as we come, we certainly appreciate the privilege of prayer. Lord, we appreciate the good singing, the good fellowship, the good spirit. Our Father, we appreciate uh, the good Word of God that we heard through uh, the teaching this morning. Father, we pray that You'd bless. Father, we pray, God, that You'd, uh, Father, Lord, endeavor us, everyone, uh, God, to live closer and get rid of things in our life. Uh, Lord, it's hindrance as a Christian. Go with us now, we pray. Uh, Father, Lord, be with the lost. Forgive us our sin. Lord, help our church to grow in grace and knowledge and number. And our Father, Lord, whatever's done, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, it's been good to be here, and uh, I enjoy going to church. Don't you? I'll about carry this thing off. I don't have any time. I'll take a string out of this pulpit. I just want to come down and uh, go over the prayer leaves. Enjoy that message. Enjoy our pastor. Love him very much. His sister, his wife, Wilma, Lord, we, we appreciate y'all so much. Y'all mean so much to us. You really do. Um, got a lot on our prayer list. Uh, I've had a few more requests uh, this morning to add a few. I hope I haven't left anybody out, but we're going to try to go over that. Um, remember our pastor, Philip, sis, sister Wilma Garland, Emma Joe, Terry and Becky, Peggy Tilson, Laura Parker. Linda Edwards, Brother Dorsey's wife, and Linda Edwards, Brother Guy's wife. Daniel Tilson, Tanya Bradford and her family. Jared Foster, Lana's mom, Lorraine. Larry Massey, Robert and Martha. Janet Morrow's husband, Theodore. Juanita Willis, Remember Alex Foster, Reverend J.D. Deaton. Gerald Blankenship, Cindy Bowman's mom, her son and her niece and her nephew. Margaret Edwards, Margaret Foster, Teresa Wilson. Larry Rose, Dana Arwood and his family. Uh, got a report on Kelvin Thomas, his wife. We've been praying for her at our church for many months now, and, and she got a good report that she's cancer-free. So that's a, that's a great answer to prayer there. Thank the Lord. Uh, Sharon Slagle, still going through treatments. Tina Wampler, Junior Carver, Paula Mary Skinto, Terry Williams, Broyt Williams, Roxanna Rogers, Dorsey and Tammy's Aunt Ida, uh, remember Kevin Bradford's mom. Continue to remember her. Remember Sister Bethany Riddle this morning. She's sick, not, not able to be with us this morning. Remember her. Andrea Smith, Janet Deaton, Ben Brackens, Kevin Willis, that's Jeff Willis' son, Connie and Ted Cushaw, Teddy Barnett, Craig Masters, Kevin Law's son, Corbin, Marie Johnson, Hazel Lloyd, Lindsey Bowman, Nikki Cox, Dallas Craig, Debbie Bradshaw, uh, let's remember Brother Zeb Tipton this morning. He's going through uh, a hard time right now. Let's remember Zeb. Uh, Tim Harris, Kevin Bowman, Rebecca Hale, Sammy Adomi, Adomi Jonathan Whitson, Bobby Shelton, Shirley Fender, Gene Bly, Tony Marolt, and uh, Sue already requested prayer for Johnny, uh, Ronnie's brother. Uh, remember Tom Turner, um, Terry Burleson, uh, Josh Tipton asked us to remember him in, him in prayer. 
they recently had to uh, induce coma. He's uh, he's got COVID. And he's battling real hard right now. So that's a coworker of Josh. Remember that family and, and that person. Uh, Edna Howard. Most of us remember Tommy Howard used to come here years ago. His mom is battling cancer. So let's remember Sister Edna. Um, Evelyn Williams, her daughter Sharon. This is a uh, uh, Sister Wilma asked us to remember. I'm sorry, I'm getting this wrong. <laughs> Evelyn Williams, her daughter Sharon, uh, Jenny, Jenny Styles. That's Wilma's sister-in-law. Let's remember them in prayer. Um, also, we're going to have a deacons meeting after church today. So, if we can, we ask the deacons to stay for just a few minutes after that. Any other announcements? I know preacher Bob McCurry's name on there. Preacher Bob was telling me about he had received some bad news. Okay. Preacher Bob McCurry. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Do you remember the family who was our house burnt down with the beard? What was her name? Macintosh. Macintosh. Macintosh family. All right. We'll add those to me. Anything else? I guess before we go to the Lord in prayer, um, let's, let's do. We'll, we'll get back to the birthdays. Does anybody have a birthday? Anybody at the fellowship hall? <laughs> Will Slope had a birthday. Will. Will had a birthday. That's right. Okay. All right. Let's sing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday God bless you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Will. Um, I guess we'll dismiss in a word of prayer and uh, pray for each other and uh, uh, got a lot, a lot to pray about. Amen. Uh, let's all stand. Brother James Bone, will you lead us in prayer?